it. Um, to, well, what's the state of the economy? Uh, what's your thoughts on the economy as we sit right now today? The economy right now is very interesting because when you look at some aspects of the economy, like jobs and job growth, it's fairly strong. If you look at some of the profit numbers of companies that are, it's, it's fairly strong. But then you look at what the Fed's been doing since March, which is raising rates, <clears throat> And it's actually hammered some parts of the market, for example, housing and, and other areas. You're seeing commodity prices roll over. So we're right at a point right now. Technically, we are in a recession. We've had two negative GDP numbers coming out by the government. But when they look at other statistics like job growth, like usually you have unemployment or people get fired in a recession. We do not have that yet. We do not have a profits declining. Usually you have that in a recession. So we're in this sort of quasi are we or are we not in a recession right now? And that's what you see what you see with the volatility and in interest rates and you see in volatility in the markets. One day, the people that believe we're not in a recession win and the markets go up. The next day, the people that think we're in a recession and the markets go down. So they were, we're stuck in, into this show me state aspect right now. Yeah, it, it, I, I can see how that, I can see how that might be. So, I mean, it, does the Fed want us to all think we're in a recession? I mean, like... What do you think has to happen to for us to, you know, finally feel like we're on the right track? Or is this is it well, us I, to have to determine that, or is that the Fed has to think that? I think there's there's two points. The first one is you you have to have this this word that people probably haven't aren't familiar with over the last thirty years called inflation that's bitten people in the last year. Like people say, what's inflation? My kids <laughs> ask that. They you know they've been you know 2025. 20, they never had to worry about inflation. Um, people with gray hair actually have had to worry about inflation. And, and so the Fed <clears throat> or whatever you want to say, the government let the genie out of the box and, and inflation's now high single digits, which we haven't had since you know since the 80s. And so they've had to um, put the brakes on Normally, the Fed just likes to tap the brakes, and that's raise rates, raise rates at, at slow rates and through time. But they've actually almost had to jam the brakes on. And just last, um, just Wednesday, last Wednesday, they did another 75 basis increase, which is the third in a row, which is one of the steepest uh, in, you know, rate increases in rates that we've had that the Fed's ever done. And so they are trying to slow the economy down, to slow in faith inflation down. And that's just, it's going to be a difficult time period. What exactly does the, the Fed's trying to thread a needle of not put us into recession, but have inflation come down. And we'll see if that happens or not happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a, like a, a necessarily easy task, but also shutting the company, shutting the country down um, during COVID and reopening back up without some type of hiccup, would also not be realistic either. I mean, yeah, that's one thing that all there's unusual things are happening. Like I just said, the numbers say we're in a recession, but the jobs numbers say we're not. Part of that's because of the COVID issue that the whole market's acting differently than it ever has. And so we don't exactly know. This isn't your standard one. Oh, the Fed's done this and this is going to happen or interest rates have done this and this is going to happen because you don't really there, there's still con supply constraint concerns that are going on. China is still shutting cities down because of COVID. I mean, we don't hear about that here in the United States, but there's some cities in China you're not allowed to walk outside still. And that hurts global demand, which ultimately hurts the United States or makes okay. it hard to plan. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, I guess this is maybe a very specific. Do, do you have an idea? Like, if, if, let's just say, for instance, if supply wasn't so constrained with China shutting down, um, do you think that would help some alleviation on inflation? What do you think that the solution really is? I, unfortunately, I think it's one word time, which, yeah. which most people aren't going to like. Yeah, um, like, I, you know, uh, General Motors, or you know, as Ford, missed their earnings. Stock fell 12%. Why did they miss their earnings? Because they don't have the semiconductor components to put in the car. The car is built. It's sitting on a lot. It just doesn't have the electronics inside of it. So it's, it's going to take time to get that up and, and running. So some of that's because it's coming from overseas. Some of it's coming from backlogs. So there's the time on that side that will make the supply better. And then demand's going to slow down here a little bit as the Fed keeps raising rates. So you'll have an increase in supply and a, and a decrease in demand that will make things work out. It's, it's just not going to happen overnight. Yeah, yeah. Why not? I mean, come on, snap your fingers. 
snap your fingers. <laughs> that's if you were. That's what if I was king for a day, you might be able to, to do to do something like that. But uh, the problem with that is then then that causes other derivative problems. That's right. so there's a few movies. Just, it's there's better to let the economy be itself rather than try to push it someplace. Yeah, there's there's this thing called unintended consequences, right? Right. All right, wonderful. 